Here I am at uh, Beth Gellert Car Park in the uh, in the forest itself, and just behind me there you can see Mole Hebog. Um, weather starting to come in; it's starting to sweep in now, uh, getting quite breezy. Um, I've just spoken to someone who's just come down from there. Actually, he said it's quite very, really breezy at the top, very windy, uh, strong gusts. Um, so hopefully I'm prepared for that. But let's see, and uh, yeah, take it from there. So I've got to go that way and uh, start my first leg. See you soon. Okay, so here I am at Princess Quarry. Uh, I've done about two and a half kilometers to get to this point uh, and about a 200 meter climb as well. Uh, from the car park itself up until about the two kilometer point, it was really good going underfoot. Uh, metal tracks, visible tracks, signposted with finger posts, really easy to navigate. Um, up until, or just after the two kilometer point, uh, yeah, the tracks tended to disappear uh, and the forest that's marked on the map been deforested and because of that a lot of the tracks have disappeared it's hard to find so uh, if you do come this way make sure you've got your navigation game on there to uh, to find your way through that also quite boggy underfoot from again from the two kilometer point um, so make sure you've got uh, good boots on and uh, waterproof socks gaiters etc because my feet did go under quite a few times um, so you don't want to be getting wet feet at this point um, Gus, the weather's starting to pick up the higher I've got and I've broke out of the valley now so uh, the winds have got quite strong, say about 30 to 40 mile an hour. I've had to drop down here just behind this rock to get out the wind. Uh, just behind me there on the uh, on the saddle. Wow, it's really windy um, and the weather is really starting to grow. Here. So I'm off now to Mole Leffin which is that way, about, uh, about a kilometre, um, 300 metre climb. Um, hopefully <laughs> it should be fairly straightforward um, I'm expecting some strong winds as I go up there but uh, fingers crossed they're not going to be too strong so uh, I'll see you when I get there
Okay, so I'm about halfway up towards Mole Leffin. Um, I managed to find a bit of a recess here uh, in a bit of a gully out of the wind, which is welcome respite from those sharp gusts. I'm about halfway up, as I said. Um, there's Mole Leffin just behind me. Uh, quite a steep ascent uh, from this point onwards. So I'm expecting to, uh, to get the heart rate going here and uh, I'm expecting it to be a lot more windier as I go up there as well. So uh, I'll see you at the top. Okay, so here I am at Mole Leffin. Um, I've had to drop down into the rocks just to get out the wind. It's the gusts uh, are quite strong up here, I'd say 40 to 50 uh, mile an hour. So yeah, very strong. Uh, just get down to get a bit of respite out the wind, maybe get a bit of warm kit on us up here as well to take a break before I move on to, uh, to the next bit. Some stunning views from up here, absolutely fantastic. Got the ocean just over there um, and uh, Snowdon and the, the mountain region over that way in that direction just over there. Absolutely stunning. Uh, wow, what a place to be. Just fantastic. Really good views from up here. So, uh, so the going from uh, Princess Quarry up to here, uh, quite easy underfoot, quite firm underfoot. Um, slow gradient to start with. Um, hardly any tracks. A bit of a, an old uh, miners track uh, at the very start that led up to a, a small cave. I don't know if you've seen that on the video. There's a little cave that I spotted there. And after that, the tracks seem to disappear. The, the occasional sheep track here and there, but that's about your lot. Um, slow gradient, as I said, to start with, and then probably the last sort of uh, three to 400 meters from the top, quite steep ascent where the, the heart rate uh, starts to uh, start to increase nicely. So uh, yeah, all good. So uh, I'm on to Mol Ir Ogof. I think I've said that right. Um, which is just over in that direction over there. Uh, probably about 400, 500 metres away. Bit of a drop to take, and then um, again some sharp ascent towards uh, towards the summit of that. Um, Going to keep an eye on the winds. The, the, the sky seems to be clearing quite nicely, um, so uh, so the rain should hold off. It's more the wind I'm bothered about. So uh, yeah, I'm going to hold on tight and make my way to the next point. See you there. So here I am at uh, Mole Ir Ogof. Um, again, dropped down to behind some rocks um, just, to, just to get out the wind because the wind is very strong. It's very strong here. Um, yeah, nice easy going underfoot again from uh, from the last checkpoint all the way over to here. Um, bit of a uh, unmarked track. Uh, that's a track that's not marked on the map, uh, but it seems to follow the county parish boundary line. So. Uh, so it's easy to find uh, from the map, and uh, yeah, with a bit of a bit of a climb to, to get to where I am now. So uh, yeah, nice nice steady walk, easy going underfoot. Again, some stunning, absolutely stunning views as I was coming across. But uh, the winds, wow, they did pick up as I was coming across that uh, that uh, that uh, saddle there uh, from the last checkpoint to here. Yeah, really strong winds. So uh, I had to hold on tight at one point. <laughs> it nearly took me off my feet. But uh, here I am. Uh, gonna get a quick drink now and uh, head off to Mole Hebog, which is just over over there. Um, about 100 meters of descent, uh, followed by 200, about 250 meters of ascent. Uh, sharp, quite sharp ascent. Uh, Distance-wise, probably about 800, 900 meters. Um, I've got to go here yeah, to, to get to there um, and uh, get to the top of Mole Hebog. So uh, I'll see you there.
Okay, so here I am at Mole Hebog. There's the uh, two point there just behind me. Quite, uh, quite a challenging leg of the route, that. It's about 100 metres uh, descent, quite sharp descent. A uh, bit of a scramble to do as well. A um, bit of a track that was, uh, that's been made by other people uh, that follows the county boundary uh, all the way to the top here at Mole Hebog. Um, the ascent, again, about 250 metres of ascent. That was quite, uh, quite demanding in places. Um, I got the old heart and lungs going, which is all good. The uh, going underfoot was quite easy. Uh, as I was coming halfway up the ascent, though, the cloud base came right down and uh, got uh, got quite windy with horizontal rain, and that added just to the uh, the difficulty getting to the top here as well. So uh, a good challenge. Uh, Please, at the top now. Visibility is getting really poor, and the uh, light is starting to fade. It's quarter to six now. Of an evening and in, uh, in a mar on a, in March, so uh, light's gonna gonna fade pretty fast, uh, pretty soon. So I need to get off the top and um, make my way down uh, in in the right direction, just over there. I'll check my map, take a bearing. A bit of a scramble to do for what I remember rightly from when I was last up here uh, last year, in 2019. In fact, I was up here with my, with my friend Lauren. We did some wild camping up here, and the weather was a lot different to what it was uh, to what it is now. Lovely blue skies, you can see from that, it was fantastic, perfect wild camp, it was absolutely amazing, and uh, not like today, um, yeah, quite, uh, quite grim today. So I need to get off the top, um, get that bit of a scramble done, I'll get a bit of a break, have a water stop, get something to eat, and uh, I'll be fairly comfortable then with navigating uh, in the dark, past that scramble, back to the car. So I'll, I'll see you shortly. So here I am back at the car. I've been here about 25 minutes. Uh, it's just gone eight o'clock, so I've probably got here about just after 22, uh, 22 eight. And uh, got changed into my comfies, my hat, my trainers, got myself prepared, ready for the journey home. So the uh, descent off the top of Mohebog, as predicted, was uh, was pretty grim. Visibility came right down. Uh, the, the gust picked up, uh, there was a bit of rain and hail thrown in there as well. And not, uh, not forgetting that the light will start to fade pretty quickly as well. So made a good call to get off there quickly because I had that a bit of a scramble to attack on the way down. Um, I say scramble, it's, it's more, I don't know, grade one here and there, uh, but it's more loose rocks more than anything. So uh, if you do decide to go that way, up or down, just bear that in mind. Um, it can be a bit tricky uh, in places, especially if the rocks are wet as well, it can get quite slippy, so just bear that in mind. So continue to descend all the way to the bottom. Um, halfway down, it started to get dark and I lost uh, daylight. So did about an hour in, in the dark, navigating here back to the car. That was absolutely fine. Um, just followed the uh, the compass bearing all the way to the uh, the metal track that runs through the woods and uh, and just followed the bearing from there and made it back here in, in good time. So uh, all in all, a good walk today. Hopefully you've enjoyed what I've uh, what I've shown you and it will inspire you to get out there and and give it a go it is a challenging walk um, you will need uh, a good set of lungs on you and some good strong legs as well um, but it's very satisfying very rewarding especially with the views that you get from up there as well they're just absolutely fantastic so uh, that just leaves me then to get something to eat and head back home but you know what I'm going to the chippy on the way back I think I deserve that see you later bye